my name is Igenese Tasonia and I am so delighted to welcome you to our YouTube channel if it's the first time you've come to visit us. Please remember to subscribe and today we're going to talk about one of the words that have the longest debates. That is destiny. And I'm not alone. I'm with my friend and sister. Melissa Manzotti. I'm so glad to have you here. Um, it's a pleasure. Today we are going to talk about destiny. We always ask ourselves, what is what is my destiny? Some people visit soothsayers, others visit witch, witch men and women, whatever, and others visit hor Google to to inquire and is it the horoscopes? Yeah, yeah. Okay. They go to visit all those because they want to know about their destiny. So today, me and my friend, we are going to talk about destiny. And before we proceed, let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for your protection and your guidance. Dear God, we pray that you may send your Holy Spirit to come and be with us. Let him abide and guide us through. We pray that whatever is talked about here and whatever is going to be done here, let it be done for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, my friend, I want to ask you a few questions. The first one, what is destiny? Uh, thank you very much for that question. Uh, destiny is... Uh a word which has different definitions but there are two uh, perspectives that many people are, rely on defining destiny mm -hmm. so one uh, definition is it there are things that will happen to you in the future so basically it's the future then uh, and other people uh, say that it is a predetermined course of events in which there is behind an irreversible decree okay. which means there's a force or someone or a being or anything who has or which has yes. uh, planned everything in which you're going to pass through without any of your control. Yes. So out of control of your destiny. It's beyond your control. So basically we have different definitions but those are two common definitions of destiny. So today I want you to tell us about what what is destiny in a Christian perspective. Like what does the Bible say about destiny? Yeah. So. Uh, when we say in a Christian perspective, we have to use the Bible. Biblically, what does the Bible say, uh, scriptures say about destiny? Let's begin uh, in the beginning. There is controversy between God and Satan. Yes. And it began in heaven where just Satan, uh, because of his pride, he wanted to be rebellious against God. Mm -hmm. And God, uh, just to be just, he created man. But he didn't create man to dictate him. He created him with a plan, but left him with a choice. Okay. That plan, people, uh, some people say it's a plan, and some people say it's destiny, and people, fate, fate or anything. Yes. So it depends on what you name it. But let's use plan. If I say plan, understand destiny. And a person was destined to be happy, was destined to feel joy with God, being in heaven, enjoying the peace of being with God. But it, there, there, there is a disruption in that story. Mm -hmm. Satan came mm -hmm. and introduced sin, man sinned. And because of that uh, sin, the original plan of a man being joy, joyous with God in heaven, it changed. Because of sin, people had uh, to work, there is sin, there is uh, sickness and everything. These are all effects of sin. But God came up with an original plan of salvation. Wow. Salvation which will be as in um, a bridge from he here on earth. We are on earth, but we have to uh, feel the presence of God through salvation. So sin puts us away from God, but through Jesus Christ, we are near, near God. Amen. So uh, one of our destiny, the Bible says that we are to be conformed to the image of, the son, of His Son, yes. Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 8 verse 29 to 30 they said for whom he did foreknow he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren more whom he did predestinate them he also called and whom he called them uh, he also justified so we see that the God's destiny upon our lives is being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ and that image is being holy the destiny we have or the plan God to, uh, has towards us is being holy and uh, it doesn't deprive us from choosing for God to be fair in this story 
Saturn intrudes and brings different things, uh, tests us with different uh, difficulties we endure on this earth, but we have that choice. In Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 it says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So God tells us that we have a choice, blessing and cursing. We have uh, life and death, we have good and evil, we have to choose. But there's a bonus in this verse that says you have to choose life. To reach my destiny, God's destiny as we have read in the Bible, it's being with him in heaven. God's uh, purpose on our life is always good as we, have, uh, as we see in Jeremiah, I think it's 29. Yes. 29, 11, yeah. that God's plan upon our lives, it is of good purpose, not of evil. So that assures us that our destiny in Christ, our destiny in God is of good uh, purpose. But it doesn't remove that Satan is there. Then God's to be fair in this story, he proposed choice. We have the free will of choosing. The problem is who are we going to choose in our destiny? Okay. So which... Uh, it identifies my, my point on different definitions I've given on destiny. Yes. I don't believe that destiny is an irreversible decree that God has given us. Maybe if you're going to die, uh, God ordains if you're going to die, your end is dying or your end is living. No. The destiny of God is of good purpose. Then how is death good? It's not good. Then if people uh, perceive destiny, some people perceive destiny as if it's an irreversible decree, as I have said. Mm. I think, Sonia, that would cause depression. Imagine, <laughs> imagine if your life, yes. you were determined to die. Imagine. Unfair. It is unfair. Yes. But God, to be fair, you have to choose between life and give us advice. I, I am the conqueror. On earth, you will meet many trials, trials, tests, and everything, but I am the conqueror. Yes. Are you willing to be on the side of the conqueror or the loser, certainly? So people who say that my life is already predestined if I uh, predetermined, it is already ordained by God. He knows the people who are going to um, perish. He knows the people who are going to be with him in heaven. That is incorrect. Yes. Because as Christians, uh, we believe what the Bible says, and that's not what the Bible says. And out of maybe Christian perspective, what I can add is, what would be the point of choosing? What would be the point of you choosing if you had a planned life? You would be a robot, not a person. Exactly. Programmed. Yeah, programmed. <laughs> yes. So I believe that people uh, often give themselves excuses that uh, the, if I'm living this life, Yes. It is written. It is written somewhere in the book, in an imaginary book, I don't yes, know. Yes. People consult horoscopes, fortune tellers, and rely on that very much. But we should rely on the choices we make. Because the choice you make is what determines your future. But the future is there. God has a plan for you. Mm -hmm. um, and one, one biblical example I can give is the story of Abraham. Mm -hmm. We have different examples, but let me use that uh, soul uh, Example. example. Yes. Abraham, God destined him to be the father of all believers. But the way in which it was going to happen, it is for Abraham to marry Sarah, then give birth to a son, whom will, he will carry on that blessing of being a, a, a father of all the believers. But Abraham didn't have enough faith. He chose to sleep with Hagar, then that uh, would exactly point out that his destiny would end in that time where he chose to sleep uh, with Hagar. But in God's grace and mercy, he told Abraham what he did, that it is not right, and he gave him the second chance. We are sinners, we were born sinners. In our mother's womb, we were sinners, already sinners. But God brought salvation. Amen. And salvation permits us to choose. Yes. Do you want to choose life? Yeah. I have saved you from being a sinner. By grace, you, did, you don't have to pay anything. So I don't believe, briefly, I don't believe destiny is something that is already ordained or written or that just commanded change. that won't change. Yeah. No, we have a right to choose our whether we will follow the, uh, the plan of God or not. All right. Yeah. Speaking of, of God's original plan, I, I, I also know in John chapter 14, mm -hmm. Jesus promised us that he's going to you know, prepare for rice mansions. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. Which means people who think that it's done, mm -hmm. like, 
their destiny is to be in hell, mm -hmm. that is not right. Because no. when he went, he said that he's going to prepare for us mansions. He didn't say that he's going to prepare for some of you. There was no exclusion. Exactly. Yeah. It was for everyone, which means that everyone has access to heaven. Mm -hmm. It's just your choice that will lead you to heaven or mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, All right. I agree. So, my friend, you've just talked about destiny and how God has a very good plan for our lives. Wow, I really love that, yeah. the sound of that. But then, coming to the real life, mm -hmm. do, you, do, do, do you realize that people who are not Christians encounter very bigger and heartbreaking problems than those who do? Mm -hmm. Do you encounter that those people who are Christians, their businesses are likely to collapse mm -hmm. faster than those who don't really do that? Totally. They give out the type, they really help the church, they do a lot of things. They are real good believers mm -hmm. as what we see in the back, physically in the background. But then those people who don't even, go to, who don't even know the way to church, mm -hmm. their life is so perfect or they're good friends or something like that. Mm -hmm. If God's plan is so beautiful for us, why are, are we the Christians encountering larger problems if than God's plan if God's plan good. is the beautiful one, as you have said in Jeremiah 29, 11, mm -hmm. that, God, that He knows the plan for, uh, that He has for us, it's for good, not mm -hmm. evil. So, what, what answer can you give me for that? Okay, thank you very much, Sonia, for uh, the good question. The question is, why do we have bad things in the God's plan? If God's plan is good, why do, do those things yeah. happen to us? Yeah. So, uh, as I have said before, we are in controversy between evil and good, God and Satan. Even, even though uh, in the story uh, God has a good plan for us, it doesn't uh, stop Satan from testing us, from bringing uh, tribulation and everything that causes grief. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying right here is, let's take an example of Job's story. Job was living a, a life faithful to God. God was very happy of the life Job was living. But Satan claimed, as he said, God, you always give good things to Job. That's why he's being How faithful. How can he be faithful? Yeah. How can he be faithful? Because you're, you're doing good to him. As we have seen, God has no evil intention upon our lives, as we have seen it in Jeremiah 29, 11. The problem is Satan, who tests us, who brings tribulation, tests different things that not only uh, make us grieve, but also make us grow in faith. It makes us grow spiritually, as in our patience and faith grow as we are being tasted. So, uh, make, uh, you should know that even though God has a good destiny or a good plan upon our lives, it doesn't uh, mean that we are going to have a, a perfect life as in we're in heaven. Satan mm -hmm. is always in the story, always causing disturbance and everything. So I think that's the way I can answer that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Alright, thank you so much. Speaking of Job, he suffered physically and mentally. Mm -hmm. Like, he, uh, no, emotional actually. Like his his wife and children died that's an emotional attack mm -hmm. and physically he was hurt like like leprosy and you know it was from the head to the feet which means he was covering the whole body exactly. so however much he was in pain he only made it through to to to, to he, he made it through because of patience mm -hmm. because of his faith exactly. and and because he had he had his spiritual growth which was you know strong and stable and stable so that's why i believe that sometimes we pass through those hard mm -hmm. things so that it can be a proof to certain that there is like, like it shows certain that we have chosen a certain side exactly so in addition in john chapter 16 verse 33 it says these things i have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye shall have tribulation. This is Jesus saying that we'll have tribulation in this world. But may it cause, um, may it cause us to have peace because he has overcome the world. He's the conqueror. Yeah, he's the conqueror. Yes. So basically the, we have a good destiny, but yeah, we have to overcome everything through faith and patience as you have said. Right. I have an interesting question for you. Yes. What do you think of setbacks? As in, some people say, if I'm destined to, I like, like I want to be a doctor. Yes. I want to be a doctor. Uh, that is my be. passion. Yeah, you thank want, you very want. much. Yeah. Uh, but some people sit back, saying, if I'm going to be a doctor, yes. they call it predestination. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to be a doctor, it's going nowhere. I'm going to become a doctor. 
and whatever way it is going to pass through, I'm going to be a doctor. I have nothing to do about it. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? Maybe some people who sit at home then say, I won't work. If I'm to work, if God has planned for me to work in UN or anything, then it's going to happen. What well, do you think of that? Okay. I'll start with this commonly used word. If okay. it's meant to be, it will be. You know it. Yeah. How do they say it in French? Que sera sera. Exactly. And you know the song about that? Yeah. Whatever will be, will be. The future is not us. Like, it means if we would take it in a biblical perspective mm -hmm. and say that it's God's plan, that's so beautiful. Yeah. And God bless you if that's what you really plan. But if you want to leave it to destiny, you're doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. So, some, mostly the youth, we sit back and we make wrong decisions of our lives. First, I'll start with, let's go to college. You don't want to go to, look, to apply for schools. You don't want to go to apply for scholarships. You just believe that somewhere in the universe, something is going to come and it will sit on your table right before you. Like, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm going to Harvard without applying. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Harvard without... Oh. Amen, we should go to Harvard. <laughs> I'm going to Harvard without maybe... Like, trying... All the beans. Yeah, I see. That's 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 next to impossible. Mm -hmm. I'll go to people with relationships. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I'm from the, the college. Mm -hmm. I'm going to relationships. You're having a misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. You and your boyfriend or fiance or whoever it is. So and then you 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 don't want to work things out. Like you don't want to sit and put things in order, or you, you don't want to forgive one another or so request for forgiveness. Yeah. Okay. And you're like, if it's meant to be, it will be. That's a movie you watched. It's not a real life thing. Yeah. So I want you to wake up from your dreams, to wake up from the movies you watch. I want you to wake up and come to real life. Mm -hmm. Real life doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. And bringing it back to maybe parents, I'm sorry. Before, before, before actually something like a divorce comes out, mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not something that just comes in the morning. Mm -hmm. It's something that happens every day. Mm -hmm. If you can't sit down in the Adventist home, Spirit mm -hmm. of Prophecy. Actually, Ellen G. White is one of my favorite authors, apart from those in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So this lady was given a very be beautiful message to give us. She illustrated the, the, a Christian home as, a, as a, a little heaven, as a heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. I'll say that. Mm -hmm. So it won't be a heaven on earth without asking for forgiveness. It won't exactly. be a heaven on earth without doing some responsibilities. Mm -hmm. It won't be a heaven on earth without maybe taking care of your children. It won't be that. Mm -hmm. So everything that we have to get, we have to work for it. Mm -hmm. And I remember that uh, at the end of it all, if you're having a job, you won't be going to... The, to if, job, if your job starts at 8, you won't be going to work at 10 and you'll be like, oh, if it's meant to be that this job will be mine, it will be mine. That is impossible. So I want to tell my fellow youth, you who are listening to this, that your decisions are the ones that affect so, my friend, I don't believe in those people who sit back and believe that something... And I really, I really want to say this. Mm -hmm. Actually, I also thought about it. Mm -hmm. Do you know that they say that... Um, I usually see captions on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Some people say, thanking the universe. Mm -hmm. That the universe brought you to me. Oh, no. <laughs> you understand. Yeah. And do you even know the universe? That's the question I want to ask. Do you even know the universe? The universe can do that. Yeah. Because it's only God who does that. If we are to know that our life is God's plan, isn't it? And our destiny is best by is best to our choices. Mm -hmm. We'll have to change some things in our vocabularies. Yes. We'll start calling destiny. We'll start calling it maybe no. We'll start calling fate a miracle. Mm -hmm. And in that way, we won't think the universe. We'll thank God mm -hmm. for that. So, personally. Yes, it's so beautiful to listen to stories of people who went to rob airplanes, boarding them and meeting their forever partners. It's so beautiful to listen to that. Yeah. But I want to tell you that it's your choice to choose whether to approach that person because, or whether to try that job or whether to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's your choice. Exactly. Your destiny is well best to what you choose. Mm -hmm. You're going to heaven if you choose, if you choose life. Yeah. I remember there is this song, uh, Ambassadors of Christ, in that... Look, I put everything before you, good and evil, but uh, life and death. And look, I give you power of choice, power to choose for yourself. Exactly. Choose what is right, and you will live forever, for the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. So I'll end with this beautiful verse from Revelation chapter 22, verse 
Revelation chapter 22 verse 12. This says that, and behold, I am com I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me. So give to everyone according to his work, which yeah. means your work is going to affect, it, affect your and, destination. Yeah. 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 So I think that's what I had to say about the sit backs and the wrong decision. Do you have anything else to tell us? So basically you have uh, briefed everything, you have said everything yes. in short, but one thing you, we should know that we are responsible of everything we do. People who believe that predestination is out of your control, you're being irresponsible. And what would be the point of judgment? Mm -hmm. If everything was programmed, as in if we were robots, as Sonia said, yeah. I think that uh, we need to be responsible of our actions. Yes, the Bible says destiny in different ways, but we see that we need to come back and say that we are destined to be uh, as, as the Son of God, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ was faithful from the beginning to the end and he lived a pure life. That's what we are called to be. We are chosen to be uh, priests. Yes. So uh, if we are princesses and prince of uh, God, then we have to act that way and we have to be responsible of our acts. Mm -hmm. The Bible also says destiny is uh, our destiny is death, as in Ecclesiastes chapter seven verse two. But we, we need to believe as Christians. We have to have faith. May our faith conquer fear. Because people who have fear of the future, they consult horoscopes. They consult fortune tellers. They are worried. What is going to happen to me? They go. What is our destiny? Uh, as you have said in this video, during this video, I have said that the destiny, our destiny, is being in heaven. It's life. People want to live. So if you want life, please choose God. Mm -hmm. Then be patient. Follow the word of God. There are many key points to reach the destiny God has prepared you to have. So it was a pleasure. The pleasure was mine, Sonia, to have this discussion with you. You should come back. I think uh, I will come back. I think people will leave comments. Uh, exactly. If they have any questions, maybe there will be a part two. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Adil, for being with us. I really want to thank our very own videographer Pascal and he's been doing a great job and other people who are live here like thank you so much you should please come back the next time and to you our friends who are watching this in the future and right now as you're watching this may God bless you I really pray that it may it, it may touch your life whatever message you've said here and I pray that whatever happens you should always put your trust in God and in God's plan because his plan is always the best Alright, so thank you so much. See you. See you.